Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to dive into a very intriguing aspect of AI project development involving the Retrieval Augmented Generation Model, or RAG. As part of this project for a client, we needed an efficient way to download documents from a SharePoint site to create embeddings. However, I quickly realized that the SharePoint document loader provided by Langchain had several shortcomings that could have an impact on the success of our project. Given the lack of comprehensive resources on this topic and the challenges that I faced, I decided to document my experience in this video. Let's get started. First, let me say that I've written an article on medium.com on the same subject. The link for the article will be in the video's description. Langchain provides many document loaders. They did a pretty good job at uh, creating loaders for pretty much everything out there. If you go on their website, you can see there's a loader for pretty much everything. What we're interested in today are the Microsoft loaders. Here are some challenges and potential drawbacks. First, they require local storage. This means that you have to download the file locally before you can process it. This could be a security risk if the file is not properly deleted. Metadata inconsistency. When creating embeddings, you want to be able to access in the metadata the original file location and potentially the page number. Integration complexity. Integrating loaders for SharePoint uh, can be complex, often requiring additional configuration and coding. Compliance and privacy issues. Transferring file out of SharePoint for processing could breach re regulatory compliance or privacy standards. To solve this, Langchain created a SharePoint loader. The problem is that it requires user interaction for two-step authentication. It has format restrictions. It currently only supports Word and PDF files. And it requires a manual configuration to retrieve the tenant name, the collection ID, and the subsite ID. If you visit the Langchain's website on the SharePoint loader, you'll see that there's a few steps to get it working. So I'm going to try and simplify this in this video. To access the um, document library from your SharePoint site, we need three things. The tenant name, the collection ID, and the subsite ID. The tenant name, that's pretty straightforward. If you look at the URL of your SharePoint site, the first part of the domain name is what you're looking for. Or you can visit uh, the Azure portal and do a search for Azure ADB2C and the first part of the domain name is what you're looking for. The collection ID and subsite ID, well, for those, that's the manual part I was talking about. You need to create a URL where you include the tenant name and your SharePoint site, and that will give you a URL that you can access. And what you're looking for is what you have inside the GUID tag over here, okay? So you do this for both um, collection ID and subsite ID, okay? The SharePoint site ID, well, that's the tenant name, .sharepoint.com, comma, your collection ID, comma, the subsite ID. Now, in order to do this, you need to access the Graph um, Explorer Playground and do a query on using the SharePoint site ID, okay? So, the, you'll see that the uh, playground is pretty straightforward. You paste your query here, you run the query, and you get the result. Uh, I created a slide for it. And what you're looking for is the ID in the payload. Let me demonstrate this with a uh, VS uh, code project that I've created. And by the way, the code will be on my GitHub and the link will be in the video description. First thing you'll have to do is create a .env file for these three variables. I basically copied this from the Langchain uh, website. So you'll have, you can have it uh, from there. In my SharePoint site, I created some folders, and each folder contains 
a uh, document of the same type. So Word, PDF, uh, PowerPoint, etc. So the first time that I run this, or the first time that I connect to my SharePoint site, I need to set the token to false because I need to trigger the two-step authentication process. Once uh, the process is done, it will copy the token locally. And the second time that I connect, I just need to set it to true to reuse the token. Okay, so let's run it for the first time. And you'll see it's giving me a URL that I need to visit. So let's click this. And once I'm authenticated, it's returning me another URL that I need to copy and paste right here. And that will uh, complete the authentication uh, flow and print the document. So it was pretty straightforward. Now, if you notice, look at the metadata. It's not pointing to the original SharePoint file. It's pointing to a local folder on my machine. That means that Langchain has downloaded the file locally before it could process it. Okay, now let's try with a different file type. On my SharePoint site, I had a folder called PDF that contained uh, that contains PDF document. It's basically the same document as my Word document, but saved as a PDF. And now I'm gonna set the token to true because when I ran it, the first time with false, it automatically downloaded the token locally. By setting it to true, it will reuse the same token. Okay, so let's run the demo again. And you can see that it downloaded the PDF. The file name is somewhere around here. Uh, see right here. But look at the metadata. It contains much more information. These are all the tags from the Word document. Okay, now let's try with a document type that is not supported, like PowerPoint, PPTX. Let's clear this. Run the demo again. See, it's returning an empty document. So, it's not supported. Let's try with text. Same thing. My solution to this problem was to create my own SharePoint client. I needed to have a class that would have functions to uh, help me retrieve the site ID, the drive ID, get the content of the root folder, download a file or a particular folder, and also create loader classes for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, and text that would allow me to create Langchain documents without downloading the files locally. Now, in order to use this uh, class, you'll have to create an app registration on the Azure portal. And I'm not gonna do this here because I've already documented this in my article. If you scroll down a little bit, there's a section on configuring Azure app registration for SharePoint access, okay? It's a step-by-step, -step. it's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna let you do that on your own. Now let's head on to my second demo. In the main.py file, um, I have the import for my client, which is defined in the SharePoint underscore API.py, and basically is where I define my SharePoint client. Uh, it's a class that contains a bunch of functions to uh, get the access token, the site ID, the drive ID, and so on. Okay, so I'm not going to go through this. It's all documented into my article. And I just want to demonstrate now how this works. Okay. Um, here, I'm reading my .env file to get the information for the authentication. So I need the tenant ID, the client ID, and the secret. Okay. Obviously, the site URL and the resources. But the main thing that the app registration will uh, give us are these three uh, variables. Once I have that, I can create an instance of my SharePoint client. And... Once that's done, I can call my get site ID, get drive ID to get the uh, root folder, and then I can display the root folder, and then I can download all kinds of stuff or uh, call my custom loaders. 
Let's run it once uh, with the rest of the code commented out so that we can display the site ID, the root folder, and the root content. Okay, so let's run main.py. And as you can see now, I don't have to manually get the site ID and I can get the root folder ID and the root folder name and I can get the root content which I can have my docx folder, my PDF, PowerPoint, Excel and text folder. Let's comment out the site ID because I don't want to have to blur it out every time. Um, the root ID I don't need as well and uh, now I'm just going to print or list the folder content. Okay, basically uh, the first element in the list is my Word uh, folder or my docx folder and it should print montreal.docx. Let's run this and here we go. So the root content, all the folders, and then I'm displaying the content of the first element of the list and it displays uh, montreal.doc. Okay? Let's try and download the file locally. Um, let me comment this out. Let me uncomment this. And I have a local path called data right here. As you can see, it's empty. Um, I know that I said we didn't want to download the files locally, but I still implemented that functionality just in case. Uh, but be reassured that when you use a custom loader classes, the file is not saved locally. It's read and the Langchain document object is created without saving the file. Okay, so let's run this now. And you'll see in the data folder, the document should appear. Hey, here it goes, montreal.docx. Okay, so now let's try with uh, the second folder, which is my PDF. Let's run it again. And the PDF document should appear. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Now let's try and let me comment this out. And let me create a text splitter. Now, because if you want to create embeddings, you have to create chunks, okay? Either by token or by character. In this case, I'm going to use a Langchain character text splitter with the um, carriage return as a separator, chunk size of 200 and an overlap of zero. Okay, and let me uncomment this out. And let's go back to the Word document, which is the first folder in the list. Okay, uh, let me clear this and let's run main.py again. Now, that's pretty interesting, okay? Because now look at my source. My source is docx, which is my folder on my SharePoint site and the name of the document. Now notice that there's no page number in a Word document. And that's because based on a bunch of uh, properties like font size, printer, um, the page size, a page number could change, okay? So for that reason, we're not supplying a page number, okay? Uh, it's not the same thing for a PDF though. If I look for PDF, because a PDF page will not change based on the printer or font size because it's a rendered document. So let's run it again. And see now, I get the number of chunk two and I get the page number and the uh, proper uh, path. Okay, I just realized that I was not using my text splitter. So let me comment this out and uncomment this one out. And I've changed it from 200 to 50. So I could, it should generate uh, some more chunks. Okay, let's give that a shot. And uh, it's processing my PowerPoint document, which has 275 slides and it created 1,444 chunks, okay? So it's working really well. Now let's try with, uh, doo -doo -doo, with my text file. 
remember the text file were, were not working with the uh, Langchain uh, SharePoint loader. Okay, remember he returned an empty uh, Python list. Let's try it again. Now it's processing Montreal.txt. Okay, with 40 chunks. Now let's try with Excel. Four. Let's run this again. And in Excel, uh, you know how you can have uh, tabs. So the page number in this case will be the tab. See, I have project project two, and I have another tab which is project one. If I scroll up, I should see uh, project one. See, so it seems to be working uh, even with Excel files. Okay. Thank you for watching. This is it for my uh, video on uh, custom Langchain loaders. If you liked my video, please like and subscribe. It always helps the uh, YouTube algorithm, um, especially if you like the video and it uh, encourages me to create uh, some more content. Thank you very much.